Well, May is PKU Awareness Month, and thank goodness, because it's something we need to know so much more about. And uh, the face you're about to see, you probably recognize. He's the president and CEO of Canadian PKU and Allied Disorders, John Adams, but you may know him as former city councillor. Good, Good morning. Good to have you. Good to be here, Val. So this time you're using uh, your, your person to promote awareness of PKU, which is, let me try this again. Did I do it right the first time? Fennel ketonuria. Very good. Okay. And what is it? Here's a pamphlet about it. it it's uh, something that affects the brain. Tell me. Well, uh, it's uh, a genetic uh, rare disorder, uh, and it's a cause of mental retardation, mm. epilepsy, and other neurologic problems. And it's very deceptive uh, because a baby will be uh, perfectly healthy until the umbilical cord is caught and the baby's system is separated from mom's system uh, and it's on its own and if you have PKU uh, what you eat uh, can cause mental retardation. Isn't that, All right. you know, uh, you're, you're eating to live, your body needs nourishment and yet what you're taking in could for, ultimately harm for you. For people with PKU, uh, eating protein, eating meat, eating milk, mother's milk, mother's cheese, milk, mother's milk, Eggs, uh, nuts, legumes, uh, cereal, pasta, bread is a kind of poison. Uh, the problem is uh, in the human liver, we've got a bunch of different enzymes, 8,000 different. They each have a different job to do. If you've got PKU, one of those enzymes isn't doing its job. Just one. Just one. And there's something in protein. The protein is made up of amino acids. Uh, and that enzyme isn't converting that amino acid into something useful. Uh, that uh, amino acid builds up in the system, crosses the blood-brain barrier, and over the course of the first year of life would render a newborn baby profoundly retarded. Oh, my God. Irreversible. So, so, so. If, if it's not caught in time, then this is what happens, and that's a, this is that what happens. affects that's the right. child for the rest um, of his life. Thank goodness <clears throat> governments in Ontario and all across Canada since the 1960s have had as a matter of important health policy that every baby should be tested for PKU. I remember seeing that on my daughter's new, uh, you know, new, they have a whole list of things they test for now, that's and right. that's one of them. Well, it was the foundation. It was the first one. And we're glad that, uh, we're glad that other conditions have been adding, that other families are getting good outcomes. Uh, in my case, I knew nothing about PKU until we got the phone call from the newborn screening program. Uh, and it only, PKU is rare. It affects about one in 14,000. So we test every baby in Ontario to find the one out of 14,000. And your one was the son, your yes. son, right? Well, and uh, instead of being mentally retarded, he's 25 years old, he's a university graduate, uh, he's living on his own, uh, and he's functioning very well. Uh, but he had struggles in school, um, and he, he had a terrible time starting in grade four. Come. And, and a terrible time in grade five. Why? And in grade six, Why? the school system diagnosed him with a learning disability. And what happened is he got, he had to take a reduced course load. He yeah, had he difficulty. Had been, he had been diagnosed though, he, right? He knew he had PKU. So he knew he had it. And right. what, why wasn't it, uh, the treatment working? Well, um, that's still an open question. Mm. Um, the treatment is to, is to severely restrict all forms of natural protein and try to make up for it with uh, synthetic substitutes. Um, typically, there is low protein uh, uh, macaroni and cheese. All right, uh, it's thirteen dollars as opposed to a dollar or a dollar twenty-five. So it's ten times more expensive than regular foods. Um, the diet, it, as difficult and severe as it is, is pretty good at preventing the worst of the outcomes: mental retardation. Turns out, what we've learned in the last ten years, it may not be quite so good mm. at preventing problems like attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, learning disabilities, problems of focus and concentration and multitasking and impulse control. Uh, and so we're delighted that there are research going on and, and there's a new therapy. And actually, after this program, I go to the Ontario Ministry of Health to have another meeting about uh, making sure that the government steps up and to its responsibilities and pays for of the, the first drug therapy for PKU. My son was in a clinical trial. He's been in, on this drug for five years. He went through high school and through university with a reduced course load, typically four courses a year instead of five. After being on the drug for 
one year he felt incredibly better and more capable. He had eight courses to finish his university degree. In his final year of university, he didn't take four courses or five. He took eight. Wow. Instead of getting a, a B's and C's, he got straight A's. <gasps> his brain works better because of the drug therapy. But what about the missing the, the, the protein that's essential for growth and all of those things? Well, the synthetic, and well, uh, we hope that um, uh, for those people who respond to the drug, and not everybody does, uh, that they will be able to rebalance their diet. Oh. All right? Uh, as well as have very good control of the levels of the amino acid in their system, which is poison for their brain. So, um, newborn screening for PKU and other disorders is a great health success story, but it implies a commitment. But you don't grow out of PKU, you've got it for life. And we need the support, we need specialized care and access to all the new therapies uh, so that. Not only do we prevent mental retardation, but we prevent learning disabilities, we prevent, prevent attention deficit uh, hyperactivity disorders. We allow people to be the best they can be, not just prevent retardation. And can you imagine uh, a low-income family discovering that a child has PKU? They can't well, afford a $10 box of macaroni and cheese. Well, the good news is we fought a battle. The families fought a battle around uh, almost uh, 10 years ago, and we got the government of Ontario to pay for... Uh, the, f the special medically necessary foods. Fabulous. All right, so we're th very thankful for that. They're paid for the synthetic amino acid formulas, protein substitutes. Uh, we've got to get them. So okay, now we've got a drug therapy, the first one. That's got to be part of the tool kit. The other part is that um, you don't grow to PKU when you stop being a child and start being an adult. And the, we have a problem in Toronto and Greater Toronto in that we have a great clinic at Sick Kids for PKU. Mm -hmm. and we have no clinic for PKU adults. Right, because at, right? at 18, you're on they're, your they're, own. That's right. My son is 25. He's still technically a patient at Sick Kids Hospital. The Tonka toys are kind of boring in the clinic <laughs> waiting room. Okay. It, there's so much to learn. I'm so glad we now have a month dedicated yeah, to right. raising awareness for PKU. For more information, if you're uh, interested, if you're pregnant, you want to make sure that your child is tested, canpku.org. We'll have all the details for you.